Yeah, I would like to show you the world printer that I created for an art project of Theo Deutinger. About a year ago I was asked if I could build a printer that could print a world map exactly once within 24 hours as part of a planned art installation. After these 24 hours, the next map should be added seamlessly so that the Earth's surface is slowly but steadily printed on endless paper. At the other end, the printout should be destroyed, which I achieved with a razor blade that cuts the paper into strips. If you now say that this is a pure waste of resources, you have already understood the basic idea of this installation, because art is meant to astonish your brain and so trigger discussion. Here the printer is still not in its final stage of construction. The path from the first idea to a working printer and shredder combination was not a short one. Inspired by the mandate to build a printer, I have already published two videos in which I have introduced two raw concepts. On the one hand a plasma printer was created which, however, spread the bad smell of burnt paper and should only be operated near a fire station. The second video shows the first functioning basic concept of a practical printer that controls a standard printer cartridge with the help of an Arduino Uno. Based on this, I have enlarged the mechanics, added a Raspberry Pi to the electronics and implemented a cutting mechanism. In the following, I would like to show the printer in detail and at the same time give Theo Deutinger a short instruction manual. The paper is fed through paper rolls having a width of 43cm. A 10mm threaded rod with two ball bearings at the ends leads through the paper roll, one end of which is firmly screwed to the threaded bar and the second ball bearing is held in position by a 3D printed spacer. The threaded rod is hooked into the grooves on the two rear feet, with the spacer pointing to the side with the electronics. The paper now has to be inserted, which is a fiddly process. Prototypes rarely offer the full comfort of a serious machine. The paper must first be threaded between the lower plate covered with aluminum foil and the upper plexiglass plate. The aluminum coating on the lower plate was necessary because otherwise the paper got electrostatically charged, sticking to the lower plate and so stopping the paper feed. This effect firstly occurred in the last test phase, apparently because the ambitioned air was drier than all days before. The paper is forwarded by two pairs of rollers, one at the rear end directly above the paper roll... ...and the second stepper motor is located at the front of the machine, just before the cutting mechanism. The threaded rod is screwed to the larger gear, the smaller gear is attached to the shaft of the stepper motor. The lower rollers are composed of a 10mm threaded rod with pieces of shrink tubing. A second threaded rod to which two ball bearings are attached is placed on top of each of these rollers, so that the ball bearings press on the shrink tubing. While inserting, make sure that both ball bearings touch the surface of the paper. From the rear pair of rollers, the paper runs forward to the cutting mechanism. Here the paper must also be threaded under the strip of plexiglass. As soon as this is done, the front bar with the ball bearings can also be placed on top. When the paper is inserted, make sure that the edge of the paper sticks out about half a centimeter at the front end. This can be adjusted by manually turning the paper roll. This is needed to make sure that the cutting mechanism can perform the first cut correctly. The paper is cut with the help of a razor blade. This must be fixed in such a way that the blade is behind the front guide. If the razor blade is screwed on... ...the cutting mechanism is ready for use.
Driven by a stepper motor via a timing belt, the blade cuts an approximately 1cm wide strip from the world map from left to right every half an hour. The fact that not every cut strip of paper falls down immediately did not prove to be a problem in course of the test phase. Sooner or later, all continents fell over the end of the world. The electrons exit the world printer through the 12V line of an old computer power supply, my preferred energy source for tinkering. About one minute after switching on, the current time appears on the 2x16 character LCD screen. The desired world time can now be set using the left and right button. Once this is done, the time is confirmed with the middle button, whereupon the printer begins with the initialization. The cutting mechanism... ...and the printhead move to the limit switch. The print position of the world map can be adjusted by moving the limit switch. The printer is now ready for its work, which is started by pressing the middle button. The operation of the printer can also be paused with the middle button. If the left button is then pressed, the printhead and cutting mechanism move to the limit switches. If any service work has been carried out, the printhead can be moved back to the starting position... ...and finally the printing will continue. During operation, the display shows the world time and the meridian currently being printed. The software running on the Raspberry Pi ensures that the print is synchronized with the rotation of planet Earth. Anyone who is on site at high noon can watch the jump across the prime meridian from east to west. The jump across the dateline from west to east takes place at midnight, in the absence of visitors. As already said, the printing is done with the help of a commercially available printer cartridge, whose nozzles, as shown in the previous video, are controlled by an Arduino Uno. The advantage of this developer board is that the ATmega328 microcontroller can also be operated without the Uno board, after the software development has been completed. So this part of the electronics becomes more compact. One of the many reasons why I like the Arduino Uno. The cartridge can be changed if necessary as with standard printers by removing it from the holder... ...and inserting the new cartridge afterwards. The printhead is driven by the fourth stepper motor, also via a timing belt. The printhead is guided by 8mm press tubes and linear ball bearings, simply because I had these materials lying around in the basement. The cartridge is arranged in such a way that the line of the nozzles points into the direction of printing. That process is meant to happen slowly, degree by degree. In theory, a single nozzle would be enough to do the job, but for reliability reasons I use all 12 nozzles equally. The software randomly selects which nozzle sets which dot of the print. Furthermore, each dot of the world map is covered with ink three times. Even if several nozzles fail after a couple of worlds was printed, no gaps will appear. I had no time to make video recordings of the completely finished printer, as always, the deadline comes simply too early. You can see that the print got a little out of hand overnight because a screw on the rear paper roller got loose, but overall the printer is already working reliably here. Anyone who would like to see the world printer live in the final stage has the opportunity to do so from March the 13th to April the 10th in 2021 in the Forum Stadtpark in Graz, Austria. I would like to thank Theo Deutinger for the opportunity to finally build a printer from scratch and of course for the financial support of the project. 
One requirement I had was that all materials made for the project should be open source, and the artist agreed to this without hesitation, another thank you for this openness. With this, the 3D files, the software used and further information are available on my website, have a click. And in the box with the world printer, one of my rovers also goes on its journey to a first outdoor mission to become 